The Golden Globes returned to TV this year. NBC is airing the ceremony after not doing so last year. The Hollywood Foreign Press Association, which organizes the Golden Globes, is hoping to stay on the air after a string of controversies. Among them, two members resigned last year over accusations of bullying and an overall lack of transparency. One of tonight's nominees, Brendan Fraser, is not in attendance. He refused his invitation after accusing the group's former leader of sexual misconduct and a lack of diversity. For example, the organization had no black members in 2021. But there is one group gaining significantly more representation in the film industry, and that is LGBTQ enter entertainers. Host Gerard Carmichael will be joined by fellow LGBTQ actors, actresses, and producers either presenting or being nominated at tonight's ceremony. And a report from GLAAD found that the percentage of queer inclusive films has grown by 50% within the past decade. Here to discuss this with us is Dr. David Johns, uh, Executive Director of the National Black Justice Coalition. Dr. Johns, thank you so much for being with us. I, I want to ask you first, you know, I know you've been watching uh, as it's, it's going on, uh, as, as I've been speaking here, you know, who are some of the nominees and, and winners that are, are jumping out at you? Uh, like the indomitable Issa Rae, I'm rooting for everybody black. And I have been recently excited by the fact that Quinta Brunson, uh, has earned her award, as well as Tyler James, uh, both on the acclaimed Abbott Elementary. As a former elementary school educator, uh, watching the show warms my heart, and to see them receive uh, the deserved accolades uh, also makes me feel really good. There are a number of other folks I'm super excited about, Nisi Nash Betts, uh, chief among them, uh, but I'm really glad to see uh, the increase in diversity uh, on this year's program. And tell us a little bit about your reaction to, to years past with the Golden Globes and the controversies that have surrounded uh, them. And, and now watching it as you are this year, you know, is it surprising to you what you're seeing here? Uh, is it a departure from what you've seen in the past? Uh, uh, both and yes, yes and no. So I want to celebrate the progress that has been made. I want to honor the work of advocates like um, uh, April Rain, who started the Oscar So White campaign, who helped to shine a light on the lack of diversity, including in spaces like the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. I want to celebrate the work of my colleagues at GLAAD, who underscored, as you mentioned, the 50 percent increase over the last 10 years. 20 percent yeah. of the films that were released this year uh, featured LGBTQIA plus characters. And there is still considerable work to be done. Um, both with regard to ensuring that it is um, that there, there's more diversity with regard to LGBTQIA plus characters. The vast majority sure. of those on film are gay white men. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done in that regard. Mm. There's also work to be done to ensure um, that queer characters are portrayed by queer actors um, as well. There are still uh, so many uh, straight actors who end up sure. playing queer characters. Um, and then in addition to that, you mentioned the uh, uh, increase in diversity. Um, so we do know, based on the data that has been shared, um, that there are 103 uh, new voters. 10% of those voters are black, but the Hollywood Foreign Press Association has not released numbers about sexual identity, gender orientation, or expression. Uh, so there's yeah. still a lot more work to be done, especially when we think about intersectionality and centering the host, Gerard uh, Carmichael, who, as I am, is a black, same gender loving man. Well, I want to sh quickly, before I let you go, I want to show you a piece of research that I, for me has been a very mind-blowing thing to encounter, which is a Harvard study that has basically looked at 30 years of attitudes around prejudice in the United States. And it's basically the pulse of prejudice. And what it has found is that over time, anti-gay bias has in fact fallen off at a time when our uh, prejudices around gender uh, have barely moved, when our prejudices around race have barely moved, ageism, uh, disability, uh, if, if anything is going in the wrong direction. And so really LGBTQIA issues are the one place that Americans seem to be becoming more enlightened. I wonder if as someone who watches this space so closely, you think it's because of more and more representation and more and more positive portrayals in the entertainment we consume. Oh, absolutely. This has everything to do with media as a powerful tool in normalizing the beautiful diversity that has always existed uh, here in America and, and, and throughout the world. Um, I was recently at the Kennedy Center watching the documentary about Sidney Poitier produced by Reginald Hudlin and Oprah Winfrey, and it was not lost on me that he and so many other Black actors have done the work of normalizing our experiences. And so 
Uh, yes, it is notable and noteworthy uh, that media has provided for normalization in that regard, and there is still so much work to be done. I make the point um, uh, to, to connect to something I made previously that uh, every year for at least the last five years that I've been leading the National Black Justice Coalition has been the deadliest year on record for black trans women. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we think mm -hmm. about opportunities to increase representation beyond traditional portrayals of them as sex workers or as victims of homicide, uh, which is normally the portrayal when we think about um, uh, um, trans folks in particular, um, yeah. uh, increasing representations to normalize their diverse experiences could also help in that regard. Dr. David Johns helping us understand the long road we have traveled and how far we have to go. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.